Briggs and Joanna. So here we've got the most beautiful tablescape with bud vases with the additional hint of Halloween. First of all you need to find some really beautiful glass vessels um, which I'm sure you'll have around the house. I'm a real one for collecting uh, vases from charity shops or you know you could use lovely china cups and vessels. So one thing you do need to do is, is to make sure you actually fill the water two-thirds of the way up. Now for the longevity of the flowers would normally recommend that you add some flower food. But if you don't have this available, you could use a little bit of lemonade or you could use a little bit of a steriliser tablet. So first of all, you need to have a selection of foliages. Okay, so we've got beautiful buried eucalyptus, conifer. We've got some lovely autumnal rose hip, astrantia, and some winter hellebore at the front there. So we've got the quicksand rose. We have a spray rose a back Baccara rose, viburnum, and we have a really lovely autumnal eucalyptus here. So first of all, when you're selecting your roses, um, it'd be amazing if you have some lovely roses in the garden, or you can get these from the supermarkets, or you can get them online. Now, I always talk about looking at the quality of your rose, and that's really important. And you really want to look at the leaves and make sure that they're really lovely dark, glossy green. If they're yellow, it means that they've been hanging around for a while. Now on the outside of your rose, you'll notice that sometimes they can look a little bit marked. These are actually called guard petals and what you can do is, is just remove them. Now if you want to make your rose a bit fuller, you can blow into the middle of the rose and it just kind of opens and looses the rose slightly. Now, the best thing you can do is actually stand the flower next to the actual vase itself. And standard practice, you should have two thirds vase and one third flower. So I'm going to just put this in, in the vase here. Now make sure that you actually have no leaves actually into the water. And as you can see, I've cut the stem at an angle. So there we go, I'm just gonna place that there. We actually work in odd numbers. It's really good in making the eye dance and look around the table. I advise that again, you keep all the flowers of the same type, the same level. And you can see I've done them both at slightly at an angle. And then I'm going to mix things up a bit. And again, it's really important that you work with the same shades. As you can see here, I've done different bleeds of pinks and giving that depth of the kind of ruby red. So I would advise if you are doing this tablescape that um, I would make it a day before to let the flowers really, really open. So I'm going to do this flower slightly shorter. I'm just trying to create a bit more depth and I'm going to put two roses in the same vessel here. And as you can see, the red rose is a bit lower than the pink rose and I've done that on purpose. So again, you get a bit of variation. Spray roses are really important because they're like a filler flower. It's just softening that red rose. Now the reason I like to add viburnum, one, it's in season. So again, you'll have lots of beautiful berries in your garden. And it's got this lovely black kind of opal, iridescent feel. Keep on adding and experimenting. The great thing with this is if it adds too much to one vase, you can then add it to another. Now, I do think it's really important that you do add some foliages to your design. So I'm just going to add some of this lovely buried eucalyptus here. And the great thing about the eucalyptus is, is it dries beautifully. So it's one of those things that you can have on your table, on the sideboard for a period of time. So when you're doing your tablescape, I think it's really important to also bear in mind how many people you've got coming for dinner. So for an example, I would normally advise that you should have three to five bud vases per person. But if you want a more denser look, then you could do maybe five to seven or maybe even nine. So I've got some really beautiful winter hellebore here. Um, and I think sometimes it's quite nice to have it by itself. I love the pure simplicity of this flower. Um, and this grows beautifully in the garden. So to bring in a bit more texture, and again to give a bit more height, I'm now adding a bit of conifer. So I'm adding this in with the uh, quicksand rose. And it smells beautiful. So you're really getting those wintry elements coming through. So as I've got this one with hellebore, I'm going to do another two designs. I'm gonna have three with just winter hellebore in. 
So we've got some lovely Estrantia here. What I love about Estrantia is, is it just keeps on giving. It almost dries. So if you're really wanting something for the longevity, I highly recommend this and it's a great filler. Like your roses won't last as long, um, but the great thing is you can just keep on pulling out stems, refresh the water. I get asked a lot, how often should I change the water? Me, I like to change the water every other day, uh, just for that freshness and for that longevity. If it's a round table, you could have a slightly taller vase in the middle. And you can see it's now really coming together. But I feel like it might need a little bit more warmth. So now we're going to bring in the autumnal rose hip which is to die for you can get lots of different colors it can come in a really lovely peachy color to the real kind of rich red be careful because it can have some nasty thorns on there and i'm just going to add in a couple into the vases and if you want to be really daring you could actually just do a couple of vases of just the rose hip which i think i'm gonna do because sometimes i think bolder can be better you really shouldn't force too many stems into the vase. If you do that, then the flower can't drink properly and you'll have an unhappy flower and you won't get the longevity. One thing to bear in mind, it's really much a creative process. So really kind of enjoy it. It doesn't matter if it goes off on a bit of a, on a different tangent. Um, experiment. The great thing is you can always recut the stem. So I'm just going to show you if you really want to create a bit more height and drama, you can actually add a longer stem and it's lovely and it's kind of curving and it's giving a bit more detail to the design. So you can see here I'm just adding in a couple of taller stems here. I'm going to do another vase of the spray roses and I think I might just add a bit more of the conifer. Now normally when planning your flowers ahead we would normally say that really you don't really want more than kind of five colorways now i don't include the green foliages in that otherwise it can end up looking quite bitty but the lovely thing about foliage as well is that it protects the flowers especially things like the roses so bear that in mind just looking at the design, I really feel like it could do with a bit more black viburnum. So I'm just going to add in some additional touches um, to each of the vases. And you've just got to really think that this is really personal to you. You might have a favourite flower. Go on, crack on, use it. You might want to add a bit more scent. But I think also just think of that time of year, seasonality, things you can get in your own garden. It doesn't even need to be flowers. You could just use beautiful oak leaves, um, even grasses. So just really just go out and just cut a couple of stems and bring them into your home. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when you start framing them in a beautiful vase. All these vases aren't actually all the same colour, so don't be afraid to have two, three different shades, and they don't have to all be the same height. And this is what I love about bud vases, is I don't know if you ever find this, but if you have a big vase of flowers, I always end up breaking a stem, and it's really frustrating. So this is a perfect opportunity to use those kind of stems that are broken. I'm just gonna have a look, and I think I'm gonna frame the ends with these beautiful hellebore vases. And the great thing is you can see that all the flowers are going off slightly at different angles. And that's exactly what we want. We want to create some beautiful rhythm. So your eye kind of moves up and down. So it's like a wave. And the great thing is you can just move around the vases. And that's what's so flexible is if you're having sharing platters down the table, you can really break it up. So don't be afraid. And you could do that in between courses. That's what's so great about the versatility of a bud vase. Can you see that this rose hip is kind of bouncing? It's not straight. So I'm just going to get some eucalyptus. Oh, you get that amazing smell. It's beautiful. And I'm just adding into a couple of the designs just to break it up slightly. And do you know what? The one thing I love about this is I like to do it with some of my friends, you know, get other people involved. Don't think you have to just do it by yourself. It's always great to have another eye. And now we can start accessorizing. To create your perfect tablescape with that autumnal feel or even thinking about Thanksgiving, we bought some really beautiful miniature pumpkins and we've got some lovely candles to accessorize with. And I'm just going to group 
two together and then again add another pumpkin. And I'm just going to group these around and I'm creating this beautiful river look and I've got these beautiful tea lights that I'm going to add which is still with the golden theme. Personally, I love a stripped back table. I think it's beautiful. Now, if you are thinking of adding uh, linen and things to the table, make sure that there's no creases. It's one of my big bugbears. Um, but I personally like to have everything really stripped back and then really look at the napkins that you're using. I've got a slightly deeper color tea light. And again, I'm just gonna add that in. Don't be afraid that they don't match. As long as you've got more than one, you can dot those through and it will really balance out. And I think we are nearly there for the perfect dinner party.